welcome. This is Ruth and today's video is all about the Bits and Bobs box die set. So this one has 50 different dies inside and I'm going to have a quick run through all of the dies and then we'll just start to make something. If you haven't already subscribed I'd really really love you to do that and that way you'll be able to keep up to date with all these videos. I've got lots in the pipeline as always and my affiliate links to everything will be down below. So thank you very very much. So inside, this is what we always like to see, at least it's what I always like to see when I get a new die set. There's a complete instruction guide in here and the cutting list up at the top. So if you prefer to do that and follow along with the video at the same time, feel free to do that. But I will have all of these done for you in the video and that should save you any bother. Apart from this little cutting thing up here, because that's just fantastic actually. It just gives you a good guide as to where to start. So let's have a look at the dies. I've already set them on a piece of grey card here just so we get a better look at them. But I'm thinking, yes, it's going to make this absolutely gorgeous box because look at the box. I should have said that first of all. Look at that. It has a little box with little feet on it. But the reason it's called Bits and Bobs is because it has these little compartments to put all your bits and bobs in, of course. So uh, that is made by this area here and little pieces that fold up. That's the top air panel that sort of fits on there. So let's have a look at this. Of course that's going to look absolutely gorgeous on a card. I'm reckoning you could sort of stagger that up maybe on dimensional foam pads and then obviously these ones are going to be beautiful panels that you could use on a card as well. Really really gorgeous here or as you know I love to make bookmarks. I've got a few friends and they absolutely love reading. Uh, I do like reading myself but I've got a few real real bookworm friends and every now and again I just love to give them some bookmarks. And they're always very much appreciated, of course, and that's why I keep doing it. But uh, that's why I always see bookmarks in a lot of these things here. And I think a little card just to say you appreciate someone being your friend or to thank them for something and a little bookmark along with it. Well, it just makes someone smile. So we've got some a flower here and a heart and some little bits and pieces that you could definitely use uh, even in memory books or whatever. So what have we got here? We have photos and buttons, odds and ends, and sewing kit. Well, that could go on your your little bits and bobs box, but I think those would be really good as well. Paper clips too, of course, up here. That would be really, really good on a memory book as well, because sometimes you've got little bits and bobs and even little bits and pieces that remind you of something where you were, and you can just pop that into a memory book as well. I love doing that. So without further ado, I think I'm going to go straight on to uh, showing you lots of pieces that I've already cut out. I wanted to do something sort of bright and bold this time. So I've gone for pink and white and I've done lots of die cutting already. And I thought I would go for this first of all and then I would go for this. And then I settled for this one, which is fuchsia pink, backed with some black and then onto white card. I've taken the biggest square out of the set and I've cut that out for the base here and then I've got three of the side panels they were cut with this die and then I've got two hinges cut with this die so first of all I am going to glue these on here so this will get glued on to the sides by these little glue tabs here which I've already burnished and it's going to go like that and one in there and then these glue tabs here the hinges will go on here now just at this stage I haven't decorated these sides yet but I'm going to do that once I get these glued together. taken this die and I've actually cut out six of them but at the moment I'm using three and you'll see it's got a rounded edge here and then on this glue tab it's got a little chamfered edge so I have burnished those with my bone folder here and I've also just taken my ruler and a pencil and I've marked the halfway mark down here so that's actually seven centimeters from top to bottom I've marked it at three and a half here and here 
and I've done the same here and here so I've got the four marks here and here and these panels then are going to get glued on by this rounded edge facing in towards the centre so the rounded edge will be facing like this on both of them but the score line that you have burnished carefully there will go from point to point so that's exactly down the halfway line and this one is going to be exactly the same facing down towards the centre and along to the half halfway point but at the top edges of both of these the edge that's closest to this part here we're not going to put glue the whole way up just glue to round about here because that means that whenever you fold this all up this one here will fit down in beside but that will in behind it that will all become clear in a moment or two but for now just put glue down here and lay that down from point to point right on there you can take your three other pieces that are exactly the same as this and glue them from top to bottom right down here so with the rounded edge again facing inwards just sort of exactly the same as this one there and there and up at the top there to decorate the side panels before I glue this up. I suppose I could wait until the end but I think I'd like to do it now. So I've taken this one, this die, and this is the longer one of the two rectangles there and I've cut that out in black and then I have used that one and that one together in the fuchsia pink and I have backed the pink onto the black and I've got all my bits and pieces already here and I'm just going to turn this over and I'm going to glue one here and one below it on these three sides I can go ahead and glue all of this together so remembering that there's a little gap in there I can fold this up and tuck that in behind there hopefully you can see that little gap in there and that just slots in behind like that but I'm going to put glue all down that side and this side and bring these up together got a second square exactly the same size as this one and I'm going to put glue all along these tabs here that's down in the center and glue this one in and that will be my little shelf and that will create the two separate sections there in this I'm going to add a little lid onto the top and close this off so that the drawer can slide in and out of there. So I've taken the exact same die that I used for the shelf and the base. That's going to be the top of the box. And then I've used that die along with the die which cuts out the piece in the centre. That's this one. So I've placed both of those together on some black card and I've cut out this shape. So that took both of those dies together to give me this shape. 
Now I'm going to glue that directly on there but you can see already that these pieces were cut out in black and I'm holding on to those and I'm going to glue some little panels which I've cut out with this die and this die together and first of all I have used the both of those on some fuchsia pink card and I'm going to glue them onto this I've already done one there so it gives a little black border around that now if I had just cut that uh, with the one die the way I've done the other ones there with this one and I had it a little bit smaller you would see the white there but what I want to do this time is just raise this up on 3d foam pads and it'll just give a tiny little faint little view of the white inside of it there. I've also taken the square die from the set here, so that would be the larger one. I've cut that out in white and I'm going to glue that on there. And then I have taken this one, cut it out in black. It's going to go there. And I've used the two together on some fuchsia pink and that will go there. And I'm going to add that on, on top, with 3D foam pads as well. So that will just give a little bit of dimension the whole way around. I'm just looking at this and, you know, I think I might actually just go ahead and die cut this. Yeah, I'm actually going to die cut that through and make that just that little bit smaller because I quite like the white. So I've just changed my mind as I'm making it. But I'm going to go ahead and cut these ones smaller before I add these onto them. Well, I didn't actually die cut them again. What you can see is it was easier just to pop them onto the die cuts that I already had. And then I can just trim around them here with my little scissors. And I've already got the other three on, but I thought I would show you that as well. And then we'll just pop a little 3D foam pad in there. And that leaves you that little, just a smallish border of white around there. But, do you know, this kind of reminds me of liquid all sorts for some reason. <laughs> so there we are. That's the lid. And I am going to... Put glue all around this area here and pop that on top then I can make a little drawer for inside it to make up the drawer I've got the inner square so that's not the large one that I made the base and the lid with it's, it's the one that's smaller than that and I've cut that out and then I have cut out four of these side panels so this is the one with just the glue tab along the base here and I need four of these little hinges for that and I've burnished those as well and burnished all these glue tabs so what I'm going to do this time then is add these little glue tabs onto one side of these so each one of those will have a little glue tab on the side of it and just make sure it's the same side the whole way around and then it'll join up nice and neatly at the end for you. going to attach these little pieces on the whole way around and you'll see that those side panels then attach neat neatly to each other the whole way around by these little hinges too and that forms your little drawer. Now I've also got this piece that I'm going to put on the front of the drawer and I've die cut this as well with that beautiful debossing pattern on it there and you can see that I've cut that out in some black mirror card and that's going to be my little handle. So I'm going to glue that on at the end. I always like to just check that the drawer is properly aligned. I find if you've even got a millimeter out on your drawer that you can correct it once you've got it in place. If you just align this part to be straight and that's the part that your eye is drawn to. I shouldn't need to but I always like to do that just to keep everything perfectly in line at the end. So now I'll go ahead and just add all these on. I've already made three of these little uh, inner drawers, the sort of what I would call the bits and bobby drawers. <laughs> and uh, this is the little die I used. And I've cut that out four times to make that. And I'll just show you how I have 
assemble that so I've cut it out in strong card again this is 300 GSM white smooth card and I'm burnishing all these little score lines and glue tabs back and now all I need to do is put glue on all of these tabs and hold it all together and that makes this cute little drawer and the easiest way I always find and I'm sure you've seen me do this before pegs <laughs> They're so handy. I just pop them on there and then I can move on to the next bit. It means you don't have to hold that. If you're a bit impatient the way I am when I'm waiting for glue drying, pegs are just fantastic little helpers. See they all fit in like that so it's very easy to work out where they get glued. You just glue in between here and here and here and here and I'm going to do that now and then we'll think about the next bit in the middle. to make a little square compartment for in the centre and glue it in there so that you can actually lift all of this tray out and that won't just be straight through to the drawer there. So what I'm going to do is use the square that's here so that's the larger one and then four of these sides and glue them just around here so by that glue tab back on here again and then the whole way around like that and then I'll have my little side piece pieces all joined together and that will fit down into the centre there. So now I can just go ahead and add glue all around the outside of that and pop it in here. It's a very tight fit but it does go and then that can be a lift out little panel to go in there, a lovely little tray. Now I'm going to go ahead and make just a plain little drawer to go in the bottom here. I've taken this lovely little die to make the little feet or legs or whatever you call them. And I've cut one out for each corner but I've also cut an extra one out of 300 GSM black smooth card. And I've actually glued the two of them together. And then scored the little fold lines and just make sure they're all together like that. And Normally I would just put glue on and, and hope for the best and hold it for quite a wee while but in this instance I'm putting a little bit of high tack tape right across there and really the hardest bit of this is getting the backing off it but that will hold that together and give it just a little moment or two to grab before I uh, the glue takes over. I'm going to put glue in certain parts of it as well but it's very hard to hold a mirror card onto something once you've got glue on it so I'm just going to put some glue and some of that and both will work together. So on the corner that I have left exposed here, I am just going to set that down and make sure it's right out to the edges, just like that. And that gives you double thickness little feet or legs and it means it's very, very sturdy. And you can, whoops, you can go ahead then and just press that down with either a bone folder or a pokey tool or whatever and make sure you can feel it with your finger here or your thumb that you've got it right out to the edge as well. Now when you've got that done you can add a little bit of extra strength to the base by die cutting the smaller uh, 
die cut which is the one that I made the drawers out of and that will fit right over there now just uh, pop it in once you've got those feet on and that just gives the, the base of the box a little bit of extra stability it's not really seen so it doesn't matter which of the colours and I reckoned I had more black card than I had white so that's really why it's black but there we are and that's the beautiful little box now I have cut out some of the little flowers because I thought they would look really pretty up on the top but then I just decided I really loved the black shiny card and I love that little heart die with the little uh, put edges around it and I have cut four of them and I'm going to put one each right round here the little insert in the drawer here and I really don't see why, the, why I would need to lift that out because um, I think it actually would look a lot tidier if I glued it in here because you can see a little gap on there so I'm just going to go ahead and add some glue just around the top rim of it. It doesn't need too much because it's quite a snug fit anyway but I'm going to add it around these edges here and pop it back in again and uh, I think the whole thing will look a lot tidier then because these edges tend to pull away a wee bit from the outside of the drawer. I've made that with two little drawers in it but you could make it with one you could make it with several just as many as you like and you can add these up the side or you could add a panel of patterned paper if you like now I also have sealed this top off but if you had cut off the glue tabs on the inside of these two pieces here and here and this one you could actually just add a glue tab onto the bottom of this top piece here and you could have a little lid which opened and closed that way as well but I kind of just liked it sealed like that. Then you could obviously add little compartments in here by putting card down the centre or across this way. Or you could even make, as it shows you in the instructions, two long inner trays to go in there. And then that can go on inside there. It could also have little feet on. It could have little feet off. It could be really customised to whatever way you like it yourself. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and make any others because I think that's sort of fairly simple but what I have done is come back with the same dies except I've changed the panel out a little bit here and I've used the with love in the middle and I've made a little card so that card is actually five and a half inches by five and a half inches and again I like to give a present and a card together so you could fill this with something really really nice for whoever you're going to give it to and then give them a lovely little card to go along with it so I hope you've enjoyed that it's actually very very different looking but it's very very easy to make so it is one that you could try and you won't shouldn't really have any problems with it at all i hope the video was easy enough to follow for you do let me know if you're enjoying the videos give me a little thumbs up at the end if you do and leave me a little comment because i always appreciate that i like to know who's watching and i like to know what you think of it as well anyhow my affiliate links to this and anything else i've used will be down below in the description as well so I'll get a little commission from that, but it doesn't cost you anything extra at all. Just the basic price that it is on the website. So thanks very, very much to anybody who uses those too. Once more, just before I go, if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to do that and hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the new videos as they come up, but it also helps my channel along as well. So I do really appreciate that. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye bye.